Jeremiah chapter 35. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, okay, so another dated part of this chapter. You can go back in uh, Kings and find out when this king ruled. Go unto the house of the Rechabites, and we'll talk about them, and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jehazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habaziah, and his brethren, all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites, and brought them into the house of the Lord, the temple. Now, I really didn't do that much of a study, but I believe these people are uh, Gentiles. He brings him into the temple. That's what Paul was accused of. But he didn't. He didn't bring Gentiles in the temple, but that's what he was accused of. I took uh, I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chambers of the son of Hannah, 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 the son of Ignaniah, a man of God. So here's somebody who's standing for the Lord, a man of God. But you don't ever read anything more about him. You just read about his chamber. You don't read nothing what this guy does but a man of God. Not all of your actions you do as a Christian right should be proclaimed for all. There are things you should do just to do just for the Lord. Let the Lord give you the credit. You know, we don't even know what this guy did. We just know he's a man of God. Are you known as for a man of God? Which was by the chamber of the princes, which were above the chambers of Messiah, the son of Shammu, the keeper of the door. I like to get by these names as quick as possible. So here they are. They're in this chamber. They're, by, they're in the temple of the Lord. There are cha chambers outside the temple. Rooms. And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabite pots full of wine and cups. And I said unto them, drink ye wine. I was telling my wife today, isn't that one of the verses that you should expect people to quote to you? Who want to drink? You know, Jesus turned the water into wine. Well, here's a perfect verse if you want to take out of context. Jeremiah, the prophet, gives these guys a keg and cups and says, "Go ahead and drink." But they would never quote verse six. But they say, "We will drink no wine." Oh. If I laid verse 5 on 9 out of 10 people, their reaction would not be verse 6. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, you shall, not, you shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. Now this is a man that told his family, commanded his family, and they still are obeying uh, at least two generations. Neither shall ye build houses, no, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any. But all your days ye shall dwell in tents, they're nomadic tribes. That ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. Don't have no settling place. If that's not a type of a Christian, what is? I pledge allegiance to the flag. Oh, America's my home. That's not a record bite. Our father told you you better not drink no wine. 
Where's the Bible tell the Christian to build a home? Jesus is building us a home. He's building us a mansion. We're to be laboring about. Paul was a tent maker. This land, this world, this earth, this planet should be strangers unto us. And we ought to be strangers to them. Going about our father's business. And for the record, it was, it was Jonadab their father, not God the father. He laid out to his family for whatever burden he had, whatever emotions he had, whatever conviction he had, he laid out for his children. No wine, no settling, but you be nomadics. Now why? We don't know why. We're not told why. And that's not the question why. That is not the point of chapter 35. Thus have we obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father. Christian, have you obeyed your father and what he has declared to you? Have you obeyed the voice of your father, God in heaven? By his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Or is this world your home? Are you one of the few that go ahead and drink wine? Or have you settled yourself into a vineyard? Have you settled yourself into a house? Are you busy planting gardens? The only seed word to sow is the seed of the gospel. Our Father in that he has charged us to drink no wine all our days. We, our wives, our sons, nor our daughters. Now if you go back to verse 6, it says, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. They added, not only us, but our wives and our sons and our daughters. They took it one notch or more to teach our children. Listen, if our father said it was bad, it is bad for our family. How do you like that one? Pull that into a church that has hiccup juice. Nor to build houses for us to dwell in. Neither have we vineyard, nor field, nor seed, nor mattock. Well, if a Christian doesn't have any seed, he ain't going to get no crown. A vineyard would be the Jew. There was a man that planted a vineyard and went off into a far country, set men thereof. And grapes are like, are you doing anything for the Jews to be saved? Now, a field is a type of the world, according to a parable that Jesus Christ told us. You ought not have nothing to do with the field. You ought to be sowing. You ought to be having something for the, something, even if you can only just pray for the Jews to be saved. But we have dwelt in tents. You trade your tent in one day for a mansion. Some people say a college. Some people change what Jesus is building. And have obeyed. Have you obeyed your father? Or have you put more money into a house than you are just to what the Lord is building? And done according to all that Jonah Dab, our father, commanded us. Are you doing all that your father is telling you? Again. But it came to pass when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came into the land that we said... Come and let us go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans and for fear of the army of the Syrians. So we dwell in Jerusalem. All right, so they are not dwelling in Israel. Assume they're not Israelites. Fear is what brought them into Jerusalem. A fear of the enemy. And God sees these nomadic tribes coming to Jerusalem and says, Jeremiah, I want you to use them as a sign. I want you to use them as an illustration. I want you to a people who have vineyards, to the people that have houses, to the people that are drinking, the people who will not listen to God their father, the, the people who will not listen to their fathers like Moses, like David. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and tell the 
men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, will ye not receive instruction to hearken to my words, saith the Lord? I'm your father. Are you not going to listen to me? All right, let me give you an example. This is God speaking. Let me give you an example. The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine, are performed. Here's an earthly father and an earthly children doing exactly what their earthly father told them to do. You guys ain't obeying me 34 chapters long. Now 35. For unto this day they drank they drink none. Why does it say unto this day? Because they're drinking unto this day in Judah and Jerusalem. But obeyed their father's commandment. You know that commandment. Back here it said, um, what did it say? Charged. God says commandment. You know what a commandment is? It's a charge. It also said, it said charge. It gives you the, the commandment. It gives you what the meaning is. And God says to Jeremiah, speak to the Jews and tell them a specific word, commandment. They're not obeying the commandments. Notwithstanding, I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye hearken not unto me. Well, these guys will listen to Jonadab. We know we know Jonadab's alive. Yet God's living, God's alive, and his own children won't listen to him. I have sent also unto you all my servants the prophet. I warned you. I love you. I have been telling you. I will sell my Bible in any store and you can get it anywhere online. You can find it online. You can have it read to you. You can get it in almost every language online. Aren't we in the days of Judah? Aren't we in the days of Jerusalem? The word is being sent out. Return ye now every man from his evil way. The Rechabites didn't start in an evil way. They were raised from children. This is what our father told us not to do. They have been raised from their, from their children of the book of, of the law of Moses. Of the examples of the kings. Of the prophets. Elijah, Elijah, Isaiah. They have an account from Genesis that as Jeremiah is being written now. And men, your doings. Get right. Go not after other gods to serve them. That's exactly what they're doing. Over and over and over, God is having Jeremiah, you tell those people what their sins are. Don't you back down. Ye shall dwell in the land which I have given you. And that's not a Christian. That is a Jew. I have given to you and to your fathers. Well, the army's here. You're going to lose your land. America may lose her land because she has given up on the God of the Bible. But ye have not inclined your ear nor hearkened unto me. Well, these men of Jonadab have hearkened to him. Because the sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them, but this people, the Jews, have not hearkened unto me. You see this group of people over here? You see these nomadic tribes? They listen to their father. What about you? You don't listen to me. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken unto them, like Jonadab. Listen, when God laid out the law, it was a nice, calm, cool voice. Here Moses writes, or whether God wrote it for him. 
Now go down and read it to the people. Now God is using an anger, wrathful voice. Because they are not hearkening. And there's judgment to follow. It ought not to be so. God has warned them. Genesis to Jeremiah 35. They have been told what to do and what not to do. And yet they refuse. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon Judah, upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, all the evil, and evil is the result of your sins. The results of your sins are never good. Because the Bible says, Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good. Evil is a, is a uh, counter word, is an exact opposite of good. When you sin, there will be no good that will follow at all. That I have pronounced against them because I have spoken on them, but they have not heard. You're not listening. I have called on to them, but they have not answered. And Jeremiah said unto the house of Rechabites, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. I don't know if he said this in front of the Jews. Because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father. Imagine you looking at the Jews. You guys ain't doing it. I just told you. I just blasted you. And kept all his precepts. Isn't that a word that's found in the law? Precept upon precept, line upon line, here and there. Look how the words are coming back. And done according unto all that he has commanded you. The time of Jesus, the Jews rejected, while some of the Gentiles had the faith. Here we are. The Jews are rejecting the message from Jehovah, and here are Gentiles being addressed therefore thus saith the Lord the host of hosts the God of Israel Jonadab the son of Rechab shall not want a man to stand before me forever now that stand before me is shown up is going to show up again and let me read you some things here it says it says Dr. Wolf 1839 formed in Arabia near Mecca a tribe claiming to be descendants of Jonadab and recently a Bedouin tribe has been found near the Dead Sea who also profess to be descendants of the same Canaanite chief. And hold on. Here uh, travelers and these have met with people who have traced their origins to Rechab and who appear appeal to the scripture as proof of God having preserved them. There are still about 60,000 of them dwelling in tents in oases of the desert today. So listen, when God said, therefore thus saith the Lord hosts, God of Israel, Jonadab the son of Rechab shall not want a man to stand before me, to stand before me forever. You can march your butt over there to the Middle East right now, and you're going to find somewhere you're going to find the children of Rechab, and there are going to be some children of Rechab that are going to be saved because it says forever, not all of them, but some of them. Why? Because they obeyed their father. And God took mark of it. And God used them as an illustration to his people. That's the reason why. They just came into the city of Jerusalem because of the fear of the, of the Babylonians. That's all they did. They had no idea they were going to run into Jeremiah. They had no idea they were going to be used as an illustration. We don't even know they know the God of the Bible. They are resting there what their life is upon what their father told them. 
had not Jeremiah stopped and talked with him, used him as an illustration, they would have done their business, got bought stuff, sold stuff, packed up, and moved on. And we would never know of these people, except God said, I want to use them as an illustration. And there are people that will come into our lives that God will use their life to show something of our life by what they're doing and what they're not doing. And these, these children, this illustration of this chapter shows there are people out there in the world who will listen to their worldly parents more than a man or a woman that loves God will do what God tells them to do. There are Christians out there to use this chapter. They're out there drinking wine. And think it's perfectly legal and can give you scripture. And yet the Bible doesn't say but the Bible suggests that you should not drink it. Except for medication use. And yet, didn't Jesus turn the water into wine? Yeah, but then isn't there a warning against it? Don't you see the actions? Don't you see the fruit of drinking? Why are you questioning? These guys never questioned their father. There's no one who says, well, why, why? Okay, he said not do it. We won't do it. And we're not even given the reason. They just obeyed. And they even went and said, you know what? Our wives and our children will not going to do it either. Christian, why don't you stand up with your family and say, you know what? What God tells us to do, we're going to do. And what God tells us not, not to do, we're not going to do it. And you're going to have a safe, good life. Except for the fact is, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But that would be persecution because you're doing right rather than sinning. Israel got a broad illustration of a bunch of people who can do right. Can do what their father told them to do. And we end the chapter with a blessing for Rechabites. Again. Where are the Jews repenting? Where is it being recorded? Nowhere. Who is this man of God? So they brought in the chambers of the son to Hannah, Hannah, the son of Eglon, a man of God. That's it. What happened to Eglon? It's recorded, a man of God. And Jeremiah, and maybe, maybe he's gone. Does it talk about as a, as a, a a father. But there are sometimes our actions do not, again, do not need to be made known. Sometimes just do the work of the Lord. Let God acknowledge who you are. And then just we seek too many rewards. We seek too many puzzles. We seek too many rewards. We seek too much grandeur. We seek too much plotting. We seek too much from people. Oh, look what I done. Why can't we just do it for God? And this guy's chambered as by the temple. God said, I want you to go in that I want you to go in that chamber so I can write in my Bible about that man. And what's God write about him? A man of God. What more can be said? What else needs to be more said? If you could have four words ever spoken about you in the Bible what four words could be more than a man of God isn't that enough with all the characters we read about in 52 chapters of Jeremiah a man of God that, that, what Jeremiah is going through that's enough said there's gonna be a man who's gonna burn the, the Word of God 
There's a man that put Jeremiah in prison. There's a man that put uh, uh, iron yokes upon the people when it was wood. There are people who wanted to kill the man of God. And here the Bible stands right, uh, right three quarters of the way through. Um, 13 chapters times 3, 39. Four more chapters will be three quarters through the, through the book of Jeremiah. And we read about a man of God. Man, it's been dismay. It's been troubles. It's been sin. It's been everything. But we read about two men of God. Jeremiah and here's this man the head by the temple. Well, just a minute. What? Yeah, but that's a lot better than what we've been reading about. And he's named, at least. 